58-year-old John Michael Enard, a convicted rapist, has a rare distinction. The state calls him a sexually violent predator. These are guys who have an extensive, extensive um, sexually violent history. Ener did more than just chuck his GPS tracking device last month and make a run for it. He unknowingly brought to light at least 10 other dangerous decisions made by the state's board of pardons and paroles. And it was a discretionary decision to let 11 of these sexually violent predators out of prison. A decision was made to release them onto parole, yes. 11 dumbfounding decisions you weren't supposed to know about. This scenario that you and Fox News has opened up as a result of Enard busting out of the halfway house has opened up the proverbial Pandora's box. A box full of deviant criminal minds. We're dealing with the, the worst of the worst, the most dangerous population of sex offenders. In the late 90s, lawmakers found a way to keep track of sexually violent predators after they had to be freed from prison. It's called the Civil Commitment Program. Without our program or our agency, these guys would be walking the streets without any form of supervision whatsoever. In the program's 14-year existence, less than 300 sex offenders have ever been civilly committed. Since the inception of the program, no one has been released yet. First experts determine which prison inmates convicted of sex crimes have an abnormality that makes them highly likely to reoffend. So although they may have four offensive of records, they have hundreds and hundreds of victims that they were never caught for. Next comes a civil commitment court hearing like this one. In these rare proceedings, jurors in Montgomery County must answer yes to two questions. Is the person a sexually violent predator and do they have a behavior abnormality that makes them likely to commit a future predatory act of sexual violence? Texas is the only state where none of these civilly committed sex predators is kept in an institution. Instead, these dangerous predators live in halfway houses and wear ankle monitors. They're on active GPS tracking, which is real-time 24-7 tracking. Keep in mind, lawmakers did this as a way to keep track of dangerous sexual predators who had to be released from prison. They served all their time, or they had to be let out due to the state's old mandatory release law. You don't knowingly parole somebody, vote to release somebody if you know they're going to reoffend again. That doesn't happen. I've never seen it happen before. But get this, Fox 26 Investigates has discovered the parole board actually allowed Enard and 10 other sexually violent predators just as dangerous as he is to leave prison early. And in some cases, shaving several years off their lengthy prison sentences in the process. Is it a good idea to parole these people to let them out before they serve their sentence, before you have to let them out? Th that's not a decision for me. And it's you know, not. I, parole I, Division I, Director I, Stuart I, Jenkins I, also I, has I, no say when it comes to deciding if sexually violent predators should be released early. That decision is made by the state's parole board members. If, if they've made that determination, then I, I, I would think it's a good good decision at that point. It was a good decision to, to parole these 11 yeah. sexually violent predators. Yeah. Again, I don't know the specifics on each of those cases. But yet, all 11 of these parolees share the same scary distinction. Their deviant thoughts and behavior caused the state to civilly commit them as sexually violent predators. Another common thread, none of them had to be released. In fact, the only reason they are now walking among us is some parole board members gave them a huge break. Bottom line is the parole board owes the public an explanation. They knew to explain why they did what they did, why they voted this way. We spent over a week trying to get parole board members who get paid around 95 grand a year of your tax dollars to answer our questions on camera. But through a spokesman, they all refused and won't even say why. The parole division director doesn't think how these predators got released from prison should matter. Bet it makes a big difference to the public. I think when you tell them that 
these people are out because somebody decided they could go out, not because they had to be let out, that makes a big difference to most people, but it doesn't make a difference to you. Again, from the functions and operations that we perform, it's the same operations that we, we perform, whether they're parole or mandatory. Could the state's indifference to paroling these sexually violent predators change? That depends on Enert and the other sexually violent predators who have vowed they will rape again.